So let's discuss how my Blackboard page works. Things that you need to worry about are going to be course information, course content, announcements, my grades, and mail. Those are the things that you need to worry about. So under course information, you've got this start here folder. Start here folder is going to be where all of the videos that hopefully you're currently watching are that will allow you to learn more about how to take a test properly, what's in your syllabus, where the schedule is, how to use Blackboard, etc. Here is my contact information. If you haven't programmed it into your phone, but you need it, you've got my cell phone number right here, my office number in Alice. I do have an office number in Kingsville, but for some reason it is not working correctly. It never has ever since they have installed it. I don't know why. Um, and here is my schedule. So where am I and what am I doing? There are very few times I will not immediately text you back. If I've got my hands in bacteria, probably not. If I'm teaching, probably not. But if I'm in between classes, I can possibly text you back as well. If I'm sleeping, etc., that won't be on that schedule, but just so you know. Um, syllabus and tentative schedule for the spring. If you look, you will see that you've got your Word document syllabus. My advice would be to download it, print it, and keep a hard copy, something that you can flip through if you need to look something up. I know, you know, it's pretty easy to just, you know, download it when you need it, but sometimes we don't have access to the internet, so it might be beneficial to download some type of hard copy. This is your schedule. It is in the syllabus, but if you don't want to take the time to look that up, you will notice that there are color-coded days, orange, yellow, green, and red. And some of these have red letters to indicate that they're important. All that I am planning to do, chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, et cetera, et cetera, when the assignments are due, when your unit exam opens, when it is due, what were the study days, all of this stuff is in this schedule. And if you look at the bottom here, there's a key. Orange means the day the assignments open. Yellow is the day that those assignments are due. We have four units, unit one, two, three, and four. And each of those units, the first day that we really start that unit or before that is the day that those assignments open. But then the days that they are due is in yellow. You can see yellow here. Green is the day your exam opens. Red is the day that it is due. It's important that you keep in mind that for me, these dates are set in stone for the most part. Yes, if something comes up, I'll change them, but I'm hoping not to change them. So you need to keep this schedule in your brain or written down somewhere. Now going back to course information. So we went through start here, instructor contact information, my schedule, the syllabus. Here's your McGraw-Hill information. McGraw-Hill Connect is the website that has all of the software where I can write quizzes and exams and homework assignments and it has videos that you can watch to answer questions to. All of these things are going to be on McGraw-Hill Connect. As long as you didn't opt out of it, you should have all-inclusive access, which means you should have already paid for Connect access. You don't have to pay for it again. So, one of the things that I'm going to ask you to do, when you create a username and password to get onto my McGraw-Hill Connect page, Make sure you know what you've used. If you've ever used McGraw-Hill Connect before and you revert back to whatever that username and password was, you'll create a second account. Having three or four accounts doesn't work for me. If I see that, I'm just gonna start deleting them and you're gonna have to figure out what you got. 
because you should consistently use the same one. You only need one account. That's all you should have. So keep track of what you used when you initially logged in. Don't tell me later what I don't remember because that's not going to fly. Now, something else. This is where you get your quizzes, your homework, your virtual labs, for lab that is. All of that comes on this page. When you do register and it asks you for a first name and a last name and an email address, if at all possible, use your CBC email and whatever name, first name and last name that CBC has, that's what you are going to use for this. I understand that you might have a nickname, but for McGraw-Hill Connect to interface with Blackboard so that it correctly transfers your grades through the gradebook, it's better if everything matches up. So please try to do that for me. You are more than welcome to tell me which name you prefer, which pronouns you prefer, but for this, keep it the same so that we don't have any issues with the interface between the two, please. Now, for your class specifically, micro lab, you should see, micro lab, sorry, micro lecture. You should see micro lecture section 0201 and 001. Every class that I have has their own individual McGraw-Hill Connect page. So that name has to match with the page that you are trying to get to. If you are having issues getting McGraw-Hill Connect to work, you're not able to get to your quiz, you're not able to get it to run, you see the little scrolling bar over and over and over, but it's not actually opening anything, and you log off and you log back in, it doesn't work, okay, those types of issues, I cannot help you with. I can help you with the material for the class. For that, no. So who do you call? There's a 1-800 number right here for contacting McGraw-Hill Connect. As well, there's a chat, and here are the hours that they are available Eastern Standard Time. So push comes to shove, if it's something to do with your computer, they have to help you. Once the issue is resolved, then you can contact me, and if I need to, I can reset something or whatever. But I don't, I don't work with computers, so I don't know how that works. They have to help you with that. And if you call me and say, I can't get it to work, first thing I'm gonna ask you is, have you called the 1-800 number? Why? Because they can help you, I can't. Below that, you have the life size information. That is my classroom link. If you're using the phone app and it asks for an extension, that is my extension. Life size is like FaceTime. This will allow us to interact face-to-face -face so that if you've got questions, if you need clarification on something, anything like that, this is where we do that. I understand that for most of us, this is an online class, but I don't want it to be, you will never talk to me. I want to be able to talk to you if you need help. That's why I became a teacher to begin with. So if you need help, please use this. Monday, Wednesday from 11 to 12 is going to be micro specific time. But I do have tutoring hours later from 12 to two and from 3.30 to five. During those tutoring hours, anybody can come. But if you need help, take advantage of the fact that I will be there. If you can't meet during these three blocks of time, that's fine. All you have to do is text me and let me know I can't meet during that time. And I'll go, okay, great. Let's try this time. And if you say, yes, I can meet, great. Oh no, I can't meet, okay, um, I'm free at this time. We'll keep going until we get a time when both of us are free so that we can actually still meet and go through stuff that if you need help, I'm there to help you. If no students show up on Life Size or in Life Size, Within 10 minutes, I will log off. The thing about this is I, the first time that I used Life Size, would sit there for an hour by myself staring at the screen going, is anybody going to show up? That got old pretty fast. After 10 minutes, nobody shows up, I log off. In that vein, let's say that you can't come at 12, but you can come at 1240. 
Well, I'm still gonna log on at 12 and nobody shows up by 12, 10, I'll log off. But if you text me and say, hey, Miss Williams, so that you know, I can't come at 12, but I can come at 1240, I will set an alarm on my phone and at 1235, I will log in and I'll wait for you to show up at 1240 so that we can still have that interaction. You can still get the help that you need. That's life size. And all of this is under course information. Below course information, you have course content. Course content is where you get to everything else that you're gonna need. The syllabus and contract quiz. See this right here, this wording that's underneath the folder? When I write stuff like that, it means that it's important that you read it so that you know some type of information regarding what's in there. A lot of people will tell me, I don't see anything right here, right under this. Sometimes I give you instructions, sometimes I give you due dates, sometimes I give you the time frame for you to do this assignment. It's important that you take the time to read that just in case there's something in there that you didn't know. As well, the unit folders are here. You have four units, unit one, two, three, and four, and then a comprehensive final. But these unit folders are going to have PowerPoints, the recorded lectures, the quizzes and assignments, the smart book bonus points, and your exam. Let's go into unit one. Here are the PowerPoints that you can download. Here are the lecture recordings, which are linked to YouTube because that's where I uploaded them. In this folder, you will have your quizzes and your assignments. And here you will have your smart book assignments, which are basically bonus point opportunities. Notice that there's no exam folder. The exam folder will open when the schedule says exam, you know, one exam opens and it will show up right under here. For all of the other units currently, under course content, you will only have the PowerPoints and the lecture links until you actually have assignments open on this day. Right under course content here is announcements. It's important that you check announcements because the announcements are how I communicate with the class as a whole. If there's been a delay with something, if I'm opening something, it'll have the open date and the due date. If there's an issue with a quiz, if there's an issue with an assignment, that's where I post it. So you need to keep track of the announcements. You need to have those come to you. Under that, under announcements is my grades. This lists all of your grades. In the syllabus, you can see how to calculate your grade. This is all of those. All you have to do is take those numbers and calculate your own grade. Don't ask me to do it for you because I'm not going to, but you can do it yourself. It's not that difficult. But when people say, well, where are my grades? This is where they're at. Now, right under that, you have mail. You can see that right there. It goes from my grades to mail. In mail, if you are going to email me through Blackboard, you can go up to create message. So you go up to here. See this two box right here? You click that. And at the very bottom, you will see my name. You will go over here, move it over to recipients, and then scroll down. And you've got subject and you've got your text area to write the body of your email. I will say again, it is easier to text me and you will get a quicker response. But if you are bound and determined to use this, this is where I want you to email me. If you do email me through here, just send me a text and say you need to check Blackboard for micro lecture. 